Hello, friends. We're back for part two. And shall we pray before we begin, or should we just jump right. right into it? Let's jump right into it. Okay. Norma McCorvey. Oh, my goodness. Norma McCorvey, Norma McCorvey is in the news lately. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Big time. Mm-hmm. So, viewers, if you don't know, um, check out YouTube. Google or go on YouTube and type in Norma McCorvey Deathbed Confession. And you'll find a promotion for a documentary coming up which claims that Norma McCorvey says that she didn't believe any of her pro-life convictions. She was paid to say them. And there's been, there's been a lot of discussion back and forth. But mm -hmm. Monsignor, having met Monsignor having met Norma once, I had a wonderful three-hour conversation with Norma once, and so that's what we're going to talk about today. Mm -hmm. You want to go first, or do you want me to go first? Well, you talked with her longer than I, so you go first. Yeah, but you have a better memory than I do. <laughs> My daughter did a National History Day play, and the focus that year, the theme was the individual in history, and so she and her group decided to make Norma McCorvey their individual. And so she was so gracious. That's what, that's what I think you said. If this was all an act, she needs an, she needs an Oscar because I would emailed her and said, my daughter's working on a project. Could we talk on the phone? And she said, come on up. I'll talk with you. And I thought, wow. So an incredibly uh, generous and accommodating. And we met her at the Olive Garden. We drove up to Dallas. And she was very likable, but uh, for those of you who don't know, in her previous life, she was a carnival barker, and so her personality absolutely fit the profile <laughs> of a carnival barker. So we had a very colorful and very long conversation about her life and being the row in Roe versus Wade, the burden that she carried and the betrayal that she felt at being used and she went into great detail about how she was used by the pro-choice movement how she was used by Sarah Weddington and Linda Coffey who just needed a name and they just needed to, a name to win a case and change the law and the fallout from that, from that signature was, was devastating for her. And so she spent a lifetime of struggling. Um, but I don't, I don't think it was an act, like you said. It, but who knows? You mentioned Sarah Weddington. Well, that uh, is the key to a conversation I had, well, the last conversation I had with her. Uh, she was at the HLI Congress we had here in Houston in 19, uh, 19 uh, what year? 1997, I guess it was. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but then uh, sometime about maybe 15 years ago, uh, when Planned Parenthood had their annual fundraising banquet, uh, for those of you who don't know about these, uh, local Planned Parenthood every year has this fundraising banquet, and they always give a Margaret Sanger Award to someone. Well, that particular year, they gave the award to, um, what was her name, the lawyer? Sarah Weddington. Sarah Weddington. Mm -hmm. Sarah Weddington. Now, she and Norma, they were like this. They were like oil and water. Yeah. And anyway, uh, it was on a Sunday evening. It was at a hotel out on South Post Oak, there in the gallery area. It's on the east side. And uh, I uh, couldn't leave Annunciation until after the evening mass and uh, novena. So I got out there around 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And uh, there weren't too many people still on the sidewalk mm -hmm. because there were a lot of people protesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, guess who I meet? One of the handful that was still left. Norma Norma McCarvey. McCarvey. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's how I met her daughter. Oh. 
Oh, that's fascinating. I didn't know that her daughter was living in Katy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. I met her do- her daughter. She introduced me to her daughter, to her son-in-law, and they mm-hmm. had grandchildren there with mm-hmm. her. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how long we talked, but that was the last time I talked with her. Mm-hmm. And so when I heard about this, the news, I immediately started thinking, how does how does this compute? Mm-hmm. I mean. She comes all the way from Dallas. Mm-hmm. Now, she was not able to speak with Norma McCarvey. All she could do would be there, you know, mm-hmm. maybe shaking her fist. At Sarah, to Sarah Weddington. <laughs> yes. Right, right. Because there's a driveway from, from Post Oak, then on to, and, and the hotel is set back a little bit. Mm-hmm. And so uh, the cars would have driven past Norma and mm-hmm. these other people who were there mm-hmm. uh, protesting. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was no way in which she could have gotten to her. Mm-hmm. And yet, and yet, you know, she had come all the way from Dallas mm-hmm. for that brief instance, mm-hmm. and she was still out there, mm-hmm. still out there. Mm-hmm. Now, if this is all an act, mm-hmm. to me, like I said, it's hard to compute. Mm-hmm. I mean, why would a person go to all that trouble you know, to make this trip from Dallas down to Houston mm-hmm. to be out there? And never even be able to deal directly with Sarah Weddington. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just that she was just so upset. Mm-hmm. She was so upset that Sarah Weddington was being honored like this. Right. Mm-hmm. Based on a lie. Yes. And based on using her to accomplish that lie. Yeah, well, I mean, they were, they were really at odds mm-hmm. for a long, long time. Well, I don't know, I don't remember exactly what point it was, but it was over oh, years and years and years and years. And uh, she did not. So when I mentioned Sarah Weddington's name, when we sat together, the, her entire uh, physiognomy changed so that it was there. Like you said, if, if, she, if she was pretending, she does need some type of acknowledgement for that because I don't think you can pretend that type of disdain and that type of wound that was so apparent to me just looking at her face. And then, of course, she had nothing nice to say about Sarah Weddington. And you can kind of transpose that with our experience when we chatted with Sarah Weddington. And we only spoke with Sarah. Now, remember, we're doing a project. So this is my, a project my daughter that was working on. And we did not on. include me. And that we did not include my senior. I'm sorry. So when I say we, it's my daughter and uh, her, the kids that she was working on the project with. When we talked to Sarah Weddington, um, she didn't have, <laughs> I don't know. How, how would you describe it, Monsignor? There wasn't, the, I don't know. I don't know what to say about it. it was, there was a very, um, they had diametrically opposed everything. And Sarah Weddington was wedded to her cause. And Norma McCorvey is a survivor. And she wasn't wedded to her cause, this pro-life, my impression, this pro-life conviction that she had sprung from an authentic place, not just something that she was going to do and something that she was going to accomplish, but a recognition of something that is true. So I don't know if this contributes to the discussion or not, but I hope it does, um, because this is Well, if you look at what's on the internet... uh, not too long before she died, she called uh, Abby Johnson, Abby Johnson. Mm-hmm. and you know, they talked about the numbers, the big numbers mm-hmm. that Abby Johnson talks about her, what, 22,000? 22,000. And when mm-hmm. she was working in Planned Parenthood in Bryan, mm-hmm. you know, she was supervising an operation that took the lives of 22,000. But Norma was talking about you know, her millions and millions, you know, what, 60 million 60 or something like that? 60 million. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, why would she have called Abby Johnson? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shortly before this, then this most recent thing happens. Right. That's what I say. It's hard to compute. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. I, um, I, don't I mean, if, if anything, it would seem like she would call Abby Johnson and say, are you faking it just like I've been faking it? Right, right. Mm-hmm. That would be the the logic to me if mm-hmm. with these recent developments are, are truthful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not why she would call and compare numbers. Right, right. 
That's why I say I'm, I'm just very, very, very puzzled. I'm at a loss. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. I want to, before we close, I want to just read the last paragraph of uh, Abby Johnson's uh, post with regard to this um, event. Abby Johnson says of Norma McCorvey, her many years as a dedicated pro-life advocate was not a lie. Her tearful conversion, which I will keep private with me days before her death, was not a lie. The hours she spent praying in front of abortion facilities was not a lie. Her life with Christ was not a lie. The abortion industry is a lie. They lied about and manipulated her so many years ago. They did it right before her death, and they are even doing it after her death. They are the lie. Well, Abby Johnson is an insider. Mm -hmm. For sure. <laughs> For sure. She was an insider. Mm -hmm. All right. So stay tuned. I don't think we've heard the end of this stay story. Stay tuned. Keep, well, yeah, because the doctor, and, and all of this is a teaser for a documentary that hasn't yet aired. <laughs> so maybe, they, maybe they've accomplished their purpose because we're talking about it right now. But yeah, stay tuned. Um, and yeah, can't always believe what you read. Can't always believe what you hear. And God is good, just like mm -hmm. you. Would you like to close with All your right. beautiful All blessing? Right. Fear not, little flock. It is pleased your Father to give you the kingdom. Amen. Thank you, Monsignor. Bye, guys. We'll see you soon.